crime and the little gray cell. They will always catch the criminal. Agatha Christie's Poirot. <laughs> Thrill packed pages of Agatha Christie's unforgettable stories of corpses, clues, and crime, complete with bowler hat and magnificent mustache, your favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, in Death in the Golden Gate. Tonight's story of detective fiction finds Hercule Poirot in San Francisco at the time of the United Nations Conference. Really, Mr. Poirot, you don't have to take me to dinner. All I asked for was an interview. No, 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 but I insist. I owe you one dinner, Miss Blaine, for the great compliment you have paid me. With San Francisco so full of international personalities, I did not think anyone would even notice the presence of an unimportant Belgian detective. Unimportant? Oh, come now, Mr. Poirot, you're too modest. Oh, no, but of course. Modesty is one of the many qualities for which I am justly famous. <laughs> ah, voici. Here is the very excellent little restaurant which I've discovered. Oh, one moment. We better let these three gentlemen out. They uh, present an impassable barrier. That's <laughs> the idea, pal. Impassable barrier. Three musketeers. Thanks for holding the door open, lady. I'll do the same for you sometime. Well... Kind of early in the day for drinking. If they are intoxicated, mademoiselle, it is from your San Francisco air. They have not been drinking, or bet I'm quite sure. The uh, characteristic aroma is absent. Maybe, but they've got the characteristic staggers. Think they'll make that car all right? Yes, yes, I think so. Shall we go in? Hmm? Oh, yes, 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 of course. Well, here's a table right by the window. Ah, you see? They're having trouble starting the car. But why does the driver keep stamping on the brake instead of the starter? How do you know he... Oh, I see the stoplight in the rear. Flashing on... Ha! Ah, success, they're off. Yes. Now we can devote our entire attention to dinner. I'm as hungry as... It... What is it, Mr. Farrell? Hmm? Oh, that uh, gentleman at the corner table. The corner table? Oh, that foreign-looking chap with a peculiar expression on his face? Oh, yeah, that is the one rather distinguished looking. What about him? It is strange. The, the shape of the head, the hair, the general figure of the man is so familiar. And yet the face is that of a stranger. He's getting up now. He's getting ready to leave. Oh, such a blur. That is most disturbing. You know, I, I will not be able to rest until I have identified him. There's only one thing I do know. Seeing him has given me a very unpleasant feeling. Our past association was decidedly not friendly. He's probably a famous jewel thief. He looks at it. He's passing this way. Uh, ah, uh, bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, monsieur, have I changed then so much you do not recognize me? My name is Poirot. <laughs> Hercule Poirot. I'm afraid there's a mistake. Oh, no, 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 my friend. Uh, where was it we met now? In Amsterdam, Miss Poirot. I have never been in Amsterdam. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir. Goodbye. Mm, bonjour, monsieur. Mm hmm. That voice. I have heard it before. He certainly gave you the cold shoulder. It is obvious he does not relish my attention. I wonder... Ma foi! What is that? Why did I not realize it before? Mademoiselle, those men who just left the restaurant, I think they are connected with this gentleman. The three drunkards who got into the car? No, no, Mademoiselle, they were not drunk. The two who wished to appear drunk, they were holding the third and abducting him. Abducting him? Oui, Mademoiselle. Now I understand why he kept applying the brakes so the red light would flash. Why? Because he was in trouble. He was seeking help, as one might uh, uh, flash an SOS. An SOS? Well, that sounds as though there might be a story here. Oui, mademoiselle. And perhaps an unpleasant one. But what can we do? They're gone now, all of them, including your mysterious friend. Uh, yes, but fortunately this flashing light business made me suspicious, so I wrote down the license number. Come, mademoiselle. We will find out who owns the car and uh, pay him a little visit. Inside, mister. You fellas are making a big mistake. You got the wrong guy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just a newspaper photographer. I make 40 bucks a week and I'm in hot now for my next two weeks' salary. You can't get any dough out of me. Watch him, Kurt. Don't worry, Frank. I've got him covered. Now sit down. All right, come on. Let's have it. What do you want? Nothing. We just like your company. Well, I don't like yours. How long do you think I'm going to stay here? Long enough. 
Says you, I got an important assignment at nine. Well, you're not interested in your career. I sit still. Take it easy, will you, pal? You want that thing to go off? Guy can tie his shoelaces, can't he? All right, but don't... I got Curtis diving for your legs. No, you don't. You stay down. Frank, you done. He's just reaching for it. Okay, Kurt, get up. He'll keep for a while. Yeah, I see. No, no, I just knocked him out. He'll come to in a little while. You all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. All right, come on. Help me get him on a couch. Right. He'll pay for this just as soon as... That must be Kramer. Now I'll let him in. You keep an eye on this one. Yeah, who is it? This is one Kramer. Open up. We expected you sooner, Baron. This is Simon Upper. The young man, you have him here? He's in the next room. Baron, there's something he must tell you. And his camera. You brought that along, too? Yes. Good. For a moment, when I saw that little Belgian in the restaurant, I was afraid. Uh, what Belgian? Never mind. Tonight at nine o'clock, the delegates will gather in a room at the hotel embassy. They will pose for pictures. They will smile self-consciously. And then suddenly... Poof! Hmm. Now I will have a talk with this photographer. And while I talk to him, attend to the camera. Yeah, I know what to do. Be careful, Kurt. It is a very small device. But it is very effective. One click of the shutter, the bomb will explode. Oh, Baron, there's, there's one thing I must tell you. Yes? There's been a slight difficulty. Difficulty? Yes, it, it was an accident. What happened? Quickly. Well, he attempted to escape. The gun went off. You stupid swine. Come. I told you to treat him well. Well, he, he'll be coming too in a minute. Are you sure this is the man we want? Yeah, he's Larry Doyle, all right. But there's yeah, a very stupid face. Typically American. Kurt, cold water, towels. Yes, Baron, right away. Baron, huh? I thought your name was Kramer. I thought this was a simple snatch so you could get the guy's press card. I don't want any part of this bomb business I just heard you talking about to Kurt. And now that you know, what do you suggest? I think you ought to call the whole thing off. If you were in your right mind, you'd never even dream of pulling anything like it. Proceed. That's all. I think you're off balance, Baron. You're going berserk because Germany just lost the war and you want revenge. Just lost the war. Don't be a fool, Frank. We lost the war two years ago. It is not this war we've been thinking about. It is the next one. The next? Baron, don't you know what's happening? Your leaders are dead. Germany's ruined. No, Frank. Germany is not ruined. It's only the factories and they can be rebuilt. But the people, the German people are not ruined as the others. They are well-fed, well-dressed. Germany will yet rule the world. We have only to divide our enemies. We have only to prevent the unity they hope to build here in San Francisco. But knocking off a couple of delegates won't help. They'll dig up others. Yes, but it will give us time. Time for propaganda. Time to spread distrust. Look, you crackpot, you can't get away with anything like that. They'll catch you and me, too, if I stick with you. I'm pulling out. That is impossible. You already know too much. What do you mean? I mean, you stupid American swine, that you will not be permitted to warn the authorities. Oh, no, I just I can want... see it in your eyes. You will become a hero. You will save the country. I won't save the You country. won't even save yourself. <laughs> oh, what happened? Our friend here wanted to resign from our little mission. Of course, I could permit that. But why did you... Stop wasting time. Give me that towel in the water. Get him into the back room. This other one's beginning to stir already. Yes, Ben. Remember, follow the instructions. When you finish with the camera, leave it on the table in the hall. Then disappear. I will, Baron. Here. Oh. Here, young man, drink this. Oh. Can you hear me? You're all right. Oh, my head. Nothing. You were stunned. You're all right now. Ooh, everything's wobbly. Take that thing away. Only a towel. What is your name, young man? Let me go. Here, sit up. So, you're better. Yes? Who are you? What do you want? Only to extend my apologies. My friends have been guilty of a great mistake. For days now, I've been followed by a suspicious-looking man. They mistook you for him. Oh, they did. Well, I had to tell that to the police. There's a law against kidnapping. Kidnapping? No, 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 my friend. I am well known to the police. I am under their protection. And now you had better go. Why are you so anxious to get rid of me all of a sudden? Well, my friend, as you came out of your unconsciousness, you kept muttering, I've got to get there at nine o'clock. I would not want you to miss an important engagement. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, hello. Hey, Mr. Doyle. Yeah? Do not forget your camera. <laughs> Well, there's 
nobody home. You sure this is the right place? Oh, there is the name over the bell, Lawrence Doyle. This is the address the police gave to me. Uh, perhaps the door hey, is... Hey, hey there, just a minute. Where do you think you're going? Oh, uh, monsieur, uh, are you uh, Lawrence Doyle? Well, what if I am? Monsieur Doyle. Is it not true you were abducted in your automobile earlier today by two other gentlemen? You seem to know a lot about my affairs. How come you're so nosy? It is my business to be nosy, monsieur. Sometimes a stitch in time saves the whole government, n'est-ce pas? Permit me to present myself. I am Hercule Poirot, and oh, this is uh, Miss Blaine of the Time Star. Oh, how are you, Blaine? Hi. I'm a de- Hey, hey, are you that famous detective? Well, I am a detective, monsieur, and I am not entirely unknown. I was supposed to take pictures of you tomorrow. Come on in a minute, will you? I think you're just the guy I'm looking for. <laughs> That's the whole story, Mr. Poirot. What do you make of it? This is very strange, Monsieur Doyle. Very strange. You are positive they, they took nothing from you? No money, no paper? No, I'm positive. Not a thing. And another thing. I didn't mention to that last guy that there was a blood stain on the carpet that wasn't there before I was knocked out. I thought I heard a shot just before I really became conscious. I do not understand this, monsieur. As soon as they released you, why did you not inform the police? Well, I'll tell you why, because I didn't want to get tied up with identifications and making complaints and whatnot. Nine o'clock tonight, i got to be at the hotel embassy to take a picture. The heads of the delegations are getting together. I see, I see. Tell me, monsieur, this uh, third gentleman, the foreign-looking one, who was so kind to you, do you know his name? Uh, no. No, I, uh, I don't think it was mentioned. From your description, I think he's the one we saw in the restaurant. If I could only see him again and perhaps identify him. Well, I'll take you there. Oh, but your assignment to take the picture. Oh, I can make that. It's only 7.30 now. Bon, bon, let us march. Uh, Miss Blaine, you will forgive me for rushing up this way, but this may be dangerous. Oh, sure. After all, if I went along, I might get a hot story. Hey, Doyle. What? You forgot your camera. What do you want to do, lose your job? <laughs> You are sure this is the street, monsieur? This is it, all right. Let me see. It was the third house in the corner. Third house? Oh, that would be the house in front of which that truck is standing. Yeah. Hey. Hey, look, they're carrying a crate out of the house. Oh, wait. I would like very much to inspect that crate. Perhaps if I... No, I have already loaded it onto the truck. Now, that is a pity. Hey, I wrote that fellow who just jumped in. I think I recognize him. What? Hey, 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 wait a minute. Hold on. Could have sworn he was one of the guys who slugged me. Hey, damn. Perhaps we will meet him again sometime. This is the house, Miss Paul? Yeah. Good. We will just step in and see what we can discover for ourselves. Suppose, uh, they find us. Oh, you need not be afraid, monsieur. I suspect the birds have already flown the coops. Oh, here. Here's the room they took me in. Good. Ah, you see? They are gone. There are the signs of a rather hasty departure. There's the broken window I told you about. Well, and here is a loud blood stain on the carpet. Your account of what happened here is no doubt accurate. Yeah, a lot of good that does us. They haven't left a single trace. I would not say that, monsieur. They have left at least one vital piece of information. What's that? I can now give you the name of the third man, the one who revived you with the towers. Yeah? His name is Baron von Kramer. Von Kramer? I never heard of him. Should I have? This von Kramer was a German saboteur in Belgium in 1914. A a cruel, ruthless man. I had the misfortune to meet him several times. I don't get it, Poirot. How do you know he's the man? Well, this uh, Baron has one careless habit. Whenever he sits at a table with a pencil in his hand, he scribbles furiously. Oh, lots of people do that. We call it doodling. Doodle? Uh, wait, wait. But this Baron von Kramer, he is an egotist. He doodles for himself decorations of honor. I have observed him doing it many times. On tablecloths, on menus, always he draws for himself the Iron Cross. Iron crosses such as you see here on this crumpled piece of paper. Well, how is it you didn't recognize him in the restaurant? Well, the Baron has disguised himself very effectively. Plastic surgery. Oh. You know, the Germans are so clever at such things. Unfortunately for him, he has a cute to deal with. 
Therefore, monsieur, you will accompany me to my hotel where you can make yourself presentable for your important assignment. And you? And I. I, too, have an important assignment. Yes? Hello, Baron. This is Kurt. Did everything go well? I'm not sure. Just as we were leaving in the truck, that reporter came back with another man. A little guy with a derby and a big mustache. Barreau. Who? Uh, the detective I told you about before. Well, how did he get mixed up in this? I don't know. But we must act quickly. He's a sly one, that Belgian, I know. Well, what do we do? We must separate them. Every minute they are together, there is danger. Danger that Poirot will discover what we have done. We must lay a trap for him... But it must be subtle. Yes, very subtle. Well, Mr. Poirot, thanks for your hospitality. I... <laughs> I used up all your towels, but I feel a lot cleaner. <laughs> you are bored. No, no, but did you? I occupied myself with a few little tasks. Hello. Now that you are once again presentable, you can proceed to take your pictures. What about those guys? Oh, do not derange yourself, monsieur. I will pursue this. Entrez. Uh, Mr. Poirot? Oui? And my name is Smith. Oh, come in, monsieur Smith. Uh, yes? I'd uh, like to discuss something with you. As something uh, confidential. You may speak freely, monsieur. This young man, he is most discreet. Good. Uh, Mr. Poirot, I represent certain uh, people. Uh, they feel you've worked very hard all your life and that the time has come for you to uh, uh, retire. Oh, no, that is very considerate, monsieur. But, you know, in order to retire, one must have funds. Uh, what would you say to $10,000? Ten... Monsieur, I find you most amusing. <laughs> the $10,000 are in cash in this wallet, Mr. Poirot. Uh, here, uh, take a look. Merci, monsieur. Mm -hmm. The money appears to be genuine. Uh, tell me, monsieur, what are the terms of this uh, generous offer? Very simple, Mr. Poirot. You are to pack your bags immediately and return at once by plane to New York. I myself will escort you and provide you with a ticket. Monsieur Smith... Your proposition does not interest me. Uh, that is all, monsieur. You will please go. All right. But I have to warn you. My people don't take no for an answer. You're inviting trouble. Oh, tough, huh? I've had about enough of you and your outfit. Poirot, do you mind if I take this guy apart? I wouldn't try anything if I were you. I'm leaving. Goodbye. No, you don't. Good day. <laughs> eh bien, Monsieur Doyle, this is not one of you lucky days. <laughs> oh. What happened? Well, a little Japanese trick, I fancy. He was... But... Ma foi! What is it, Poirot? Well, this is a stroke of fortune. The wallet, Mr. Doyle. He dropped the wallet in the short scuffle with you. The wallet and the money? Yes, yes, it is here, all of it. But I'm not interested in that. I'm looking for other things. Papers, perhaps, some identification. Any luck? No, 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 no. Oh, nothing but this little slip of white paper. You make anything of it? Well, well, it's blank on both sides. Yes, it is blank, but perhaps... Yeah, it is worth the time. What on earth are you doing with that electric iron, Poirot? Oh, Monsieur Doyle, I am by nature a very tidy man. Entre. Well, well, Mademoiselle Blank. Well, for heaven's sake, Mr. Poirot, you're ironing. Well, that's no job for a great detective. Here, let me at it. Oh, no, 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 mademoiselle. I am most proficient at this domestic work. But you're pressing a blank sheet of paper. Mr. Poirot, look. There's writing coming up. Exactly. You see, Monsieur Doyle, the paper is no longer blank. The heat of the iron has brought out a message. The modern printing press. 8.30 tonight. Heavens, invisible ink. Modern printing press. Aha. Uh -huh. Now it all becomes clear. Monsieur Doyle. That truck in the front of the house, you recall? There was on it the same name. There was a murder committed there, and that crate we saw contained the body. Well. Well, Mr. Poirot, what now? 
It's almost 8.30. No, no, have... Monsieur Doyle, you go to the Embassy Hotel to take your pictures. And I go to the secret rendezvous at this uh, modern printing press. I'm going with you, Mr. Powell, please. Oh, there may be danger, mademoiselle. It's true, but there may also be a story. Eh bien, as you wish. If you will ring for the elevator, I will join you in three waves of a lamb's tail. I do not like this. I do not like this at all. You you should not have come with me. I know, Mr. Poirot. I'm so impetuous. Uh, well, that is a very dangerous quality, mademoiselle, for one so charming. Why, Mr. Poirot, you'll turn my pretty head. Mm. <laughs> well, this is the place. Modern printing press. Doesn't look to me as if there's any secret meeting going on in here. Uh, mademoiselle, that is the purpose of secret meetings, you know? <laughs> Quiet, please. Now. Mm-hmm. Open. I mean, Mademoiselle. I'm right with you. Can't see a thing. There is a little light coming in from the lamp in the street. Your eyes are not accustomed to the dark. I think we can remedy that. But, but... Why, it's the man in the restaurant. Oui. Otherwise known, Mademoiselle, as Baron von Kramer. So, Pato, you did see through my disguise. I was afraid you might. That is why I made such elaborate preparations to receive you. Sit down. Merci, Monsieur Le Baron. Well, well, well. I did not expect to find such uh, sumptuous quarters back here. <laughs> the printing shop uh, does. The printing not... shop. That too is a cover. I see. Oh, pardon. I've not presented my companion. This is Mademoiselle Blaine, a reporter. I am so sorry, Miss Blaine, that you have stumbled into this situation. It is most unfortunate. You see, Mademoiselle Blaine, the Baron, like all of his people, is exceedingly chivalrous. I remember how remorseful he was on one occasion when he had to let his lady accomplice die so he could escape. You are clever, Poirot, but not quite clever enough. You fell into my trap. Uh, trap? You do not even yet realize what has happened. The piece of paper, Poirot, which Mr. Smith accidentally dropped in your room. Oh, oh very clever, Baron. Ah, well, I know you, Poirot. The trap. To trap anyone else, the writing would have to be so plain, so explicit. But for Poirot, only invisible ink will do. You knew I would discover it, eh? Well, bien, I must compliment you, monsieur. You are still resourceful. I've had to be. To put you at my mercy. So this is the end, Poirot. The end of our long association. Only one of us will leave here alive. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, do not move either of you. I will not hesitate to shoot. Yes? Mr. Right. Is Poirot, isn't there anything we can do? Yes. Must we stay well, here? It does not look good for us, mademoiselle. Well, I won't stay here. No, 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 Miss Blaine. Do not move. But... I am not quite as stupid as he believes. Now, I, I did not that. fall into his trap. I have only pretended to. You mean... I know Monsieur Smith was not sent no. in a serious hope of bribing me. Von Kramer knows me too well for that. Then why was he sent? Obviously, to lure me into a trap. Then why did you come down here? I have no fear, mademoiselle. I called the police from my hotel room. They will be here presently. Yes, and... Oh, shh, shh, quiet. Very interesting. Go to Arcato. But I owe you an apology. Again, I have underestimated you. Indeed? You knew it was a trap all the time. Yes, pal. You see, I did not underestimate you. I knew you would not try to bribe me. Mm, very good. But tell me, how did you discover that I had not fallen into your trap? Oh, yes, I forgot to mention it. I have just heard from a friend of mine. By a strange coincidence, he operates the switchboard at your hotel. Good Lord. When you called from your hotel room and asked to be connected with the police, he connected you instead with another room in the hotel. You spoke to my men. Then the police... Oh, we'll not be here, mademoiselle. Hmm? Say so. I'm afraid we have reached the end of the play. Yes, Poirot. Well, it is all over. Uh, that is to say it will be all over in exactly three minutes. Uh, uh, three minutes? In three minutes, Poirot, at precisely nine o'clock, young Mr. Doyle will walk into a room at the hotel embassy to take a picture. When he clicks the shutter, he will set off a powerful charge, a bomb that will wreck the building. A bomb? Oh, a masterpiece of sabotage, Baron. Hmm. You have gone far since the old days. Yes. Then I will go further. In a week or two, I will join my superiors in South America. And as for you, perhaps you have some last requests. Monsieur Le Baron, I have lived according to certain rules and ideals, you know. I should very much like to perhaps uh, drink a toast to those ideals. That is good. And I will drink to mine. A glass for each of us. And for the lady. Nothing. A fine bottle of Napoleon.
So, uh, one moment. I will just turn on this radio. I am expecting a news flash shortly. Uh, you know, I am uh, most curious to hear your toast, Baron. It would seem well, to be... Oh, I am disappointed in you. Eh? As I turn on the radio, I watched you in the mirror. It seemed to me you passed your hand over my glass. You think I put something in it? Oh, Monsieur Le Baron, that, that is fantastic. It, it sounds like a mystery novel. Mm, <laughs> in that case, Poirot, I am sure you will not object to our changing glasses. Oh, but you... So, I have yours, and you have mine. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. I drink to the destruction of tyranny, now and forever. Excellent, Dr. Alice. It is now 9 o'clock Pacific War Time. Listen, Poirot. We have just received the following bulletin. At the United Nations Security Conference, the heads of the delegations have just posed for photographs and have now closed the doors on what is expected to be the most fruitful session of... But it is impossible. It... It... Im... What is it, Monsieur Le Baron? You look faint. Mr. Parrot. He's... He's dead. No, no, Miss Plain. Not dead. Only unconscious. You see, I knew he would be suspicious of me, so I put something in my glass before I pretended to put something in his. What did you put in? Uh, some of these. I, I always carry them with me. They are knockabout drops. Very interesting. Uh, what you call in America the uh, uh, Michael Finn. Um, now, if you will take his gun, I will use the telephone. Uh, the camera, why didn't it explode at the hotel? Oh, very simple, mademoiselle. I removed the bomb while Monsieur Doyle was washing up at my hotel. He never knew about it. Well, I don't see how you knew about it. Well, I just employed the little gray cells, mademoiselle. And they told me that these people kidnapped the photographer and then let him go. Well, obviously they did not want him. They took nothing from him. Then what did they want? It could be only one thing. The camera. Precisely. Then when I finally recognized this von Kramer, an expert saboteur, and learned that uh, Monsieur Doyle was going to the conference, it all became very clear. So I deftly removed the bomb. Uh, hello, hello. In police headquarters. Ah, uh, this is Hercule Poirot. Wait. Uh, if you will come to the modern printing press, I will deliver into your hands one Baron von Kramer. And also, I think you will find a body. <clears throat> of course, a dead one. Wait a minute. I will wait, monsieur. And now, Miss Plain, let us continue with our interview, eh? After all, I would not want to send you away uh, without a story. Death in the Golden Gate, a fiction adventure of Agatha Christie's great detective, Hercule Poirot. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.